In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create your first PPC campaign on Amazon. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so once you've logged in to your Seller Central account, what you wanna do is come over to the menu bar and then in the menu bar, you wanna come down to advertising. In advertising, you then wanna select campaign manager. Once you're in your campaign manager, you wanna come over and click create campaign. Now what you'll see here is that you have the choice of three different campaign types sponsored product campaigns, sponsored brand campaigns, and sponsored display campaigns. So let's talk about these three different campaign types. So sponsored product campaigns are the simplest and most straightforward to set up. Sponsored brands are slightly more complex, and then sponsored display is arguably the most complex out of the three campaign types. So really when you're creating your campaigns for the first time, sponsored product campaigns are the campaign type that you're gonna to want to start off with, and that's the campaign type that I'm gonna be showing you how to create in this video. Once your sponsored product campaigns are actually performing well, you can then look at creating sponsored brand campaigns and in the future also sponsored display campaigns. So if I take you over to Amazon, let's have a look at where sponsored product campaign ads can actually show up and we call these placements. So if I search the word laptop stand, you guys know I love this example, um, and we scroll down, when we're looking at the search results, what you'll always find is that the top four search results are actually sponsored products. Now the way that you know that these listings are actually being advertised and they're from a PPC campaign is because they have this little sponsored badge just below them. So these top four spots, we call these top of search, and these are actually advertising spots all coming from these sellers running sponsored product campaigns. If we click into a product listing and then scroll down just below the images, what you'll also see is there is this little box here. Um, and what you can see is that these are all also sponsored listings. So this is the second placement where sponsored product campaigns can actually show up. So essentially, if you're running a sponsored product campaign, you're paying to show your product listing both high up in the search results, that's one of the placements, and then the second placement is on product detail pages, product listings. And as you can imagine, if you're launching a product for the first time, this is super helpful because you can pay to have your product listing show up at the top of the search results and also on your competitors' product pages to get that ball rolling and drive that sales velocity. Now let's look at where sponsored brand campaign ads can actually show up. So the first placement is the top of search results here. So you can see that just above the sponsored product uh, results, you have this box basically highlighting the brand and highlighting a few products from that brand. This is a form of sponsored brand campaign ads. The second place that sponsored brand ads can show up is just further down in the search results and this is in video format. So what you'll often see is these video ads highlighting the product on the right hand side. This is the second form of sponsored brand ad that you can run. Finally, we have sponsored display ads. These can show on product detail pages on Amazon, but they can also show across Amazon's network on other websites as well. And the main way that they differ with sponsored brand campaigns and sponsored product campaigns is that instead of targeting keywords and specific ASINs, because you can advertise off Amazon as well, the way that you could also advertise with sponsored display campaigns is what we call retargeting ads, where instead of advertising on keywords and ASINs, you're actually advertising to people. So if someone's viewed your product listing, you can actually follow them around the internet and have retargeted ads on other websites to those customers. That's why it's a more advanced way of advertising and not something that you need to worry about at the beginning. Okay guys, so like I said, in this video, we're gonna be looking at creating a sponsored product campaign because this is the simplest to set up and should be the foundation of your campaign strategy. So we're gonna click continue. Okay guys, so before we actually talk about which settings to use when creating your first campaign, let's quickly look at Amazon PPC campaign structure. So at the top of this campaign structure hierarchy, we have portfolios. And essentially, once you've created multiple campaigns, so let's say that you have five campaigns for one product and you want them to be kind of linked together, you would use a portfolio. Essentially, it is a file or a folder that kind of links and neatly files away those campaigns in one place together. So you might wanna use portfolios for each product that you have if you have multiple campaigns for that same product. Next, we have campaigns, which is what we're setting up at the moment. And then within each campaign, you can have multiple ad groups. And then in each ad group, you can actually advertise multiple ASINs 
product listings if you choose to do so. Now at each one of these stages, there are different settings and this will make more sense as I show you which settings to choose as we work through this first campaign creation. Okay guys, so when you're creating your first campaign, what you'll find is that Amazon firstly asks you to choose your settings at the ad group level, which are all of these settings up here. And then later on down the line, um, towards the end of this page, they'll ask you to choose your campaign settings, which you'll find down here at the very bottom of this creation before you actually launch the campaign itself. Just want to point out guys that as you're working through this, if you need to stop for any reason, you can click the save as draft button just up here. And if you're ready to launch the campaign at any point, you can just click the launch campaign button up here in the top right hand corner. Okay guys, so like I said, you can have multiple ad groups within a campaign, but just to keep things simple in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a campaign with one ad group. So firstly, you need to create a name for your ad group. Now, because there's only going to be one ad group in one campaign, we can actually name the campaign and the ad group the same name. So the naming convention that I would recommend is the name of the product. So let's say that it's going to be a laptop stand. Then I would say dash and you want to then mention whether this is a sponsored product, brand or display campaign. So this is a sponsored product campaign. So I would just put SP and then dash and then finally you want to say whether this is a automatic campaign a manual keyword targeting campaign or manual product targeting campaign and don't worry guys this will all make sense as we go through the video in this example i'm going to pretend that this is a manual keyword campaign now the reason why you want to use this naming convention is that if you stick to it then when you have multiple campaigns you can very easily understand which campaign is which just by looking at the name next you need to select what product or products you want advertised in this ad group so either you can add in a list of asins so i would do these line by line or alternatively an easier kind of option is that if you you just click on the search button i'm not going to do that because it's going to show all of my products but if you click on the search button you'll be able to see a list of your products and then you can simply select the product and click add and it will just add it over to this section over on the right hand side so like i said guys you can actually advertise multiple products in an ad group but typically you will only want to advertise one asin per ad group the reason for this is that you want your targeting to be as specific and relevant as possible so obviously if you have multiple products that are all slightly different to each other even if they're all laptop stands, the keywords that you want to target are going to be slightly different for those different products. So a wooden laptop stand or a metal laptop stand or a black laptop stand or a green laptop stand is going to have slightly different keywords that you're going to want to target. So it's better to have one product per ad group to make that targeting much more relevant and much more specific. Then next you need to select your targeting. Now here you have two options, automatic targeting or manual targeting. So with automatic targeting, what will happen is Amazon will decide where to show your ads. So they'll decide which keywords to show your ads in the search results for and what product listings, which ASINs to show your ads on. If you select manual targeting instead of Amazon deciding, you decide. So which one should you choose? Well, I'd actually recommend using both of these targeting types in different campaigns. Um, but for this campaign, I'm going to show you how to set up a manual targeting campaign because there's a few more settings here and that will give you, it will show you all of the different options and what to select for them. Now, when it comes to manual targeting, you have two different options, keyword targeting or product targeting. With keyword targeting, you're going to give Amazon a list of keywords and you're going to use that to decide which keywords to show your listing on and also which ASINs, which products to show your listing on. Now, it's really important to understand that regardless of whether you choose keyword targeting or product targeting, both of these manual targeting options will actually show your ad both in the search results and on product listings. You're just, they're just different ways of giving Amazon information to decide which ones to show your ads on. So the first option is keyword targeting. The second option is product targeting. So with keywords, you provide them with a list of keywords. With product targeting, you can either provide Amazon with a list of ASINs products, broader product categories or brands that you want your ads to show up on. So it's important to understand that with product targeting campaigns, there is no way to set up a campaign where it will only show your ads in the search results or on product listing pages. It will always do both. So for example, let's say we chose manual keyword targeting and I added in the keyword uh, laptop stand as a keyword that I wanted to target. Amazon will show my ad in the search results for the keyword laptop stand after someone searches it. However, they'll also show it on all of the ASINs, all of the competitor listings that actually show up in the search results 
for that keyword laptop stand as well or have that keyword somewhere in their product listing. So for this example, I'm gonna show you how to set up a manual keyword targeting campaign. So once you've selected keywords, you then need to scroll down to keyword targeting and this is where you actually provide Amazon with a list of keywords that you want this campaign to target. So what you see is you have three options, suggested, enter list or upload file. Now with suggested, you'll see that there are no suggested keywords here and that's because I haven't selected one of my products. But if you have selected one of your products, Amazon will actually give you a list of suggested keywords here. Your second option, which is what most people would do and what I would recommend doing is actually doing your own keyword research on a tool like Helium 10. If you're interested in seeing how to do that, I'll put a video that I did put out a couple of weeks ago exactly showing you how to do keyword research properly using Helium 10. I'll put that up here and also link it in the description. But once you've done that keyword research and you have a list of keywords that you want to target, you can actually enter them line by line here. So you have two main bid options, suggested bid or custom bid. Now with suggested bid, what Amazon will do is it will use its algorithm to work out what um, the bid should be for that keyword and it will show you the bid range and it will select the middle of that range for you to be competitive and it will add that as the bid and that suggested bid. The other option is custom bid. This is what I would actually recommend doing. Um, so you can set this at one pound here and then you can actually individually set a custom bid for each of the keywords. Now, finally, before you actually enter in the list of keywords, what you'll see is that you have a match type option and you can have the choice of broad match, phrase match, or exact match. So what are these match types? Well, essentially a match type means you're telling Amazon how closely the search term that someone actually searches on Amazon has to match the keyword that you've entered into the campaign. So for example, let's say that you added the keyword laptop stand in exact match form. What you can see is that Amazon will only show your ad in the search results when someone actually searches the exact keyword, either the plural of that keyword or a spelling mistake of that exact keyword. If we then look at phrase match, you can see that it's the exact keyword with a modifier on it. So either something before the keyword or after the keyword, but the keyword has to remain in full phrase form and can't be split up. And then finally, we have broad match and obviously broad in the name, it is the broadest out of the three match types. And if we look at an example here, you can see that it can be the exact keyword, the keyword with a modifier before or afterwards, a keyword with an extra word in between the phrase, even splitting the phrase up, and even keywords that are different from the phrase, but are related, for instance, MacBook stand. So for this example, we're just gonna keep it simple and we're gonna choose an exact match keyword campaign or ad group. So I'm gonna unselect phrase and broad because I only want to have exact keywords. Again, I would recommend using all three of these, but I'm just using this um, for this example. I would recommend using all three, but in different ad groups, not in the same ad group. So I'm just gonna add a few keywords here. Once you've added in your keywords line by line, you then wanna click add keywords. It will take it from the left and add it over to the right hand side, double check the match uh, types. And then what you can do is add in your custom bid because we selected custom bid here. So you can go in and select a specific bid for each of those keywords. Alternatively, like I said, you can also select suggested bid and this will add a suggested bid for you instead. So as a general rule of thumb guys, the higher your bid, the better the placement that you're gonna get. So for example, if you have a really low bid, then your ads will actually show up really low in the search results. If you have a really high bid, you're more aggressive, your ad will show up at the higher, higher up in the search results, ideally at the top of the search results. So that's where different type of bids come in and how they have an effect. So next we have negative keyword targeting. You can see this is optional. So in this example, I'm gonna leave it blank, but to explain essentially what this means, um, what this means is if you do not want this campaign to target any keywords, this is where you can stop the campaign targeting those keywords. And what you'll see is that you have two different options, negative exact and negative phrase. So very much like phrase or exact keywords, if you add in a negative exact keywords, for example, blue laptop stand, you're telling the campaign to not advertise when someone searches blue laptop stand. Everything else is fine, but just not that exact keyword. If you added in blue laptop stand as a negative phrase keyword, anything anything in phrase or broad match form would also be uh, would also not be targeted. So for example, let's say that you had metal laptop stand blue, green 
and blue laptop stand or anything like that um, anything that would be a search term in phrase or broad match form related to that keyword that you've added in in the negative um, keyword targeting would be excluded from this campaign. Now, when setting up your keyword targeting, if you selected phrase or broad match here instead of exact, um, because these targeting types are broader, this is when you would want to start to add negative uh, keywords. However, if you're using only an exact match keyword targeting campaign, because it's not broad at all, you don't want to, and you shouldn't add in any negative keywords. If you don't want to target a keyword, you just remove that keyword from your targeting rather than adding it as a negative uh, keyword. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so once you've added in some negative keyword targeting, obviously I'm not going to do this because this is an exact match campaign as I've just mentioned. Once you've done that, you're done with the ad group settings and you can move on to the final two settings, which are the campaign settings. So the first campaign setting is campaign bidding strategy. And what you'll see is that you have three options, dynamic bids up and down, dynamic bids down only, and fixed bids. So what do these three options mean? Well, firstly, we have fixed bids. So with fixed bids, Amazon will bid one pound, let's say your, that is your bid, they'll bid your exact bid every single time. With dynamic bids down only, Amazon will either bid your exact bid or they'll actually lower your bid in real time when they think that you are less likely to convert or make a sale. With dynamic bids up and down, instead of just down only, Amazon will either lower your bids when they think you're less likely to convert or increase your bids up to 100%. So they'll up to double your bid in in scenarios or situations where they think you're more likely to convert. So for example, if you had a bid of one pound and you set dynamic bids up and down on, if Amazon thinks you're really likely to convert in a specific situation using that person's past search history and so, uh, past purchase history and so on, whatever they do with their algorithm, they could up your bid up to a two pound bid, up to 100% higher than your original bid if they think you're very likely to convert. So unless you're going through a launch period and you wanna be really aggressive with your bids and always have a fixed bid, I would generally recommend dynamic bids down only as this will save you money because Amazon will lower your bid when they think you're less likely to convert. Next, you can adjust your bids by placement. So Amazon actually breaks down the placements into three different placements that can be targeted with sponsored product campaigns. Top of search, rest of search and product pages. So if you wanted to be really aggressive for the top of search placements, you could increase your bid by 100% um, for top of search while leaving it the same for rest of search or product pages. It just gives you a little bit more customization. When you're first setting up your campaign, you wanna leave this alone and just set it at 0%. So you're bidding the same on all three placements. When you're optimizing your campaigns and you have a bit more data and you know which placements are performing well for your product, that's when you can actually tweak it. So if you find that top of search is performing way better than the other placements, then maybe you want to increase your bid a bit for that specific placement that's performing well. If you want to find out how to do that, I'll put a video up here that I've put out recently showing you exactly how to optimize your campaigns in this way. I'll also put a link in the description, but for now, you just want to leave this at zero. Finally, you just need to select your final settings, which are campaign name, portfolio, date, and budget. So for campaign name, because this is gonna be a one ad group campaign, we can literally just paste in the same name that we added for our ad group. In terms of portfolio, as I mentioned earlier, if you have multiple campaigns for a single product, you can actually link them together in a portfolio. So if you already have a portfolio created that has other campaigns in it and you want this to be part of that portfolio, you can select the portfolio here. However, if this is your first campaign for a product and you don't have a portfolio, you can just leave this blank and you can actually do that later retrospectively. In terms of start date, we're gonna set this as today, which is the 10th of May. And then end date, you can either select an end date if you wanna run this campaign for a specific time period, or what you will most likely be doing is leaving this blank because this campaign will be running, running for the lifetime of your product. So we can select no end date. Finally, we need to select a daily budget. Now, when it comes to daily budget, there's really no rule of thumb here. It totally depends on your product, what the demand is for your product, and what kind of campaign you're setting up. The only important thing to mention is that even if you set a daily budget, so let's say you set a daily budget of 10 pounds, Amazon may spend less or more than that um, however, they will make sure that they don't go over your monthly budget. So some days they might spend 15 pounds, but they'll make sure that they spend under 10 pounds on other days to make sure that over a 30 day rolling period, they're not going over 30 times your uh, daily budget. 
Um, so don't worry if you see them spending over your daily budget on certain days. So for example, we can just set 20 pounds here and then we can click launch campaign. Once you click that launch campaign button, you have successfully launched your first Amazon PPC campaign. And what you'll find is that within a few hours, you'll start seeing your ad actually showing up in the search results and also in your competitors' product listings. So guys, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. Give the video a like, consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one.